over Japan, and by that point, they'll be in an orbital nighttime. So moving pretty quickly, a little over 17,000, very healthy. But uh, the technical ground teams will all do their due diligence to, to make sure that it's still safe to approach. This moment, that approach is continuing, still moving in at about three tenths of a meter per second. Dragon's coming up on just 100 meters away from the space station. So at the very top there is the the nose cone um, on the spacecraft. Where we've got a cool view. Uh, left side of your screen is the International Space Station. Right side of your screen is Dragon. Inside 100 meters, continuing to close. Again, we're, we're going to have a short hold at 20 meters. Teams will just do a final check, and then they'll give Dragon the go. We're expecting it to be pretty brief. We should get to that hold point in just about four minutes, moving at our current pace. I think you can see a, a meatball and an American flag on that uh, on the spacecraft. The uh, the NASA logo, of course, the referred to as the meatball. I think there was some spirited discussion about the meatball versus the worm during ascent. And uh, those are, you can see those logos, they're, they're all, that structure on the, the fairing structure is actually what the Super Dracos are, are housed in. Of course, all of those are deactivated now, only used for launch escape during the ascent portion. Nose cone right at the, the top of the vehicle. And uh, you can see sort of the ceiling surface those uh, four circular, those four circular uh, slots right underneath the nose cone within that red ring are the the Ford bulkhead Dracos. That's what we were using while uh, we were conducting all those burns, um, the the five burns to, to get to this point. Right now we don't have, we don't have a reason to use those. We'll only be making small altitude corrections with the uh, with the service section. Dracos. You can see the service section actually pretty clearly here too. Um, the uh, There's a black portion and a white portion sort of separated by a fin. The black portion is uh, solar panels, solar cells that'll charge Dragon's batteries. And the bottom side, our uh, white portion is actually a thermal radiator that's used to keep, keep the uh, spacecraft nice and cool. Of course, the avionics and the cabin, making sure that Bob and Doug are comfortable inside. Looks like we're getting the shadow cast. We are just 60 meters away, continuing to close in, just about 40 meters to go until we're at that hold point. Should get there in just over two minutes. Meanwhile, teams in Hawthorne and in Houston doing their internal go-no-go -go for docking. They're gonna get all the teams pulled. Once everyone's go, we'll be able to give Dragon the final go-ahead for the vehicle to autonomously fly in and dock with the International Space Station. Should be coming up on waypoint two arrival in just about one minute, 45 seconds. At this point, it'll be 20 meters away from that docking port. Uh, the international docking adapter number two attached to pressurized mating adapter number two at the very forward end of the Harmony module. Right there on the, uh, right around the, the center, you can see the Ford hatch. It's got a window in it. You can see a couple of handles. And there's uh, some features that look sort of bronze-ish. Those are the pedals that we were talking about earlier as part of the, the soft capture system. So uh, pretty, pretty wild, too, to see. We're, we're so close that we're getting shadows from the station on Dragon. Wow. And we're getting these views of Dragon's approach from two cameras that are right next to that docking adapter. And the movement's a little, a little jarring at times. Uh, these, these cameras are being commanded by a person at the Cronus console in Mission Control Houston. And they send some, uh, some very basic function commands to the camera, which it then executes automatically. And so they're continuing to follow Dragon in. So we do thank them for their diligence to, to give us these views of this historic moment as we are just less than 30 meters away from docking. Right above the uh, NASA meatball logo, you can see two, uh, excuse me, three of the, the service section Draco thrusters. That's right, 12 in all. So the four of those clusters spread around the vehicle. 
used for a lot of the attitude control and any small translational maneuvers like we just watched Bob and Doug execute with their second manual flight test. Yeah, and actually oriented in a way too where if you were to lose some of those thrusters, you still have redundancy and, and control in those axes. That's, uh, that's part of the reason why they're sort of at the angles that they are. All right, so we should be getting to waypoint two right now. So it looks like we do have that hold. Dragon SpaceX on Big Loop. The ground is go for approach two. We will be enabling the resume shortly. As a reminder, ensure your visors are closed prior to Dragon's departure from the waypoint. And once Dragon is inside, the crew hands off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. And for your awareness, we have sunset in a little less than 8.5 minutes. Copies all on the big loop. Go for docking. So Doug on uh, on spacecraft confirming their go for docking. They're gonna put down their visors. Got some uh, instructions there about the the crew hands off point that we had talked about earlier. That's a point where we don't want the the crew issuing any commands to the vehicle. It's about uh, just about two meters away from the docking adapter. I believe the number is about 1.7 meters. Station Houston on the big loop. Houston and Station are now go for docking. Chris, you can monitor for steps three and four. Three and four in one decimal one zero four. Crew direct approach and retreat monitor. I'll do steps three and four. Our visors are down. Copy visors down. With the crew confirming their visors down, we should see the final approach resume. Copy and down. to be racing that sunset. The approach has resumed. Dragon closing in. We're inside 20 meters. And yeah, that, that crew hands-off point uh, should come up in about three minutes or so, uh, right before we get that final docking. It comes about 20 seconds prior, or just about two meters away from the station still. And that's uh, just the crew not issuing any abort commands. At that point, it would be uh, too late. And so any aborts would be executed automatically by Dragon itself. So we're closing in at less than a tenth of a meter per second at this point. You can see the, the service section Draco is just doing all these very small minor attitude corrections. Really the, the autonomous docking system at work, making sure that the the uh, vestibule and the soft capture system is lined up with IDA2, the international docking adapter. much more clearly there the hinge mechanism for the nose cone those four uh, black circles are the four bulkhead dracos not to be used at this time and then of course the, the pedals of the soft capture system We're inside 10 meters. We cannot make out the darkest darkened charges, but we do see the outline. We copy and concur 10 meters. Right, we're less than 10 meters away. Again, we're closing at that rate of less than a tenth of a meter per second. We should be just about 1 minute 45 seconds away from docking. 
there is a, uh, a center line camera right in that middle so that you can see where the forward hatch is uh, and right in the middle of that there's a window and there's a center line camera that is aligned with the center of the vehicle and the center of the docking mechanism. So that is, is what the autonomous docking system is using to line up with uh, sort of a cross hatch, um, cross target on the, the docking port. Again, the forward docking port um, on PMA2 or the pressurized mating adapter. And we are just five meters away. Again, we're racing that sunset. This dragon continues to close, four meters to go. Those shadows of the, of the space station on the vehicle. Yeah, you can actually see the uh, centerline camera pretty clearly there, um, sort of with the contrast of the, the sun right now. Three meters to go. Two meters. We are inside the hands-off point, the chop, the crew hands-off point. One meter to go. Soft capture complete. Dragon and Soft capture confirmed. Stand by for retraction and docking. And we just heard it. Soft capture. We have docking that coming at 7.16 a.m. Pacific time with the station and Dragon flying 262 statute miles right over the border between northern China and Mongolia. You saw a little bit of motion there uh, of Dragon. It was that relative motion that the soft capture system is damping out. Once that motion is, is clear, then uh, the soft capture system will be retract, retracted and uh, Dragon will go for hard capture. Again, if just now tuning in, that soft capture, that docking coming 7.16 a.m. Pacific, 10.16 a.m. over on the East Coast, Dragon and the International Space Station were flying 262 statute miles right over the border between Northern China and Mongolia. So that soft capture ring now going to retract. It's one more step on the way to docking complete. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just tuning in, hatches were open at 12.02 p.m. Central Time. We are moments away from Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley entering the International Space Station.
Again, this is Mission Control Houston, moments away from Bob and Doug entering the International Space Station. Shortly after they enter, we will conduct a welcome ceremony. There will be uh, VIPs here in Mission Control Houston, Ficker 1. Looks like they're all closed visually now. We are uh, in 8 decimal 3 for both SpaceX and Houston. Dragon arrival configuration is complete. SpaceX copies all valves appear closed visually now and arrival configuration complete. Excellent to hear. Houston copies. And with that endeavor, welcome to the International Space Station. Please come aboard. Never copies with pleasure. We'll be there in a second. We have Bob Bankin from SpaceX Demo 2 Mission entering the International Space Station. Followed by Doug Hurley. 